pum pum A newborn king to see her up a pum pum Our finest gifts we bring her up a pum 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 pum, rap a pum pum. So to honor him, pa rap a pum pum. When we Welcome everybody to Diamond Creek Community Carols. Welcome to you if you're watching on our live stream this evening via YouTube. It's great to have you with us. My name's Kirk. Uh, I'm here on, sta on staff here at St John's. Uh, and yeah, really great to be with you. Tonight you can expect a whole bunch of Christmas carols. Uh, you can also expect some greetings from our uh, community groups uh, here in Diamond Creek, uh, as well as me getting up every now and then, talking about what Christmas is all about from a Christian point of view. Uh, and how it all connects in with the songs that we are singing. If you are watching live on YouTube, uh, we'd love to know where you're watching. If you've got access to the YouTube chat, uh, yeah, jump in there, tell us where you're watching, who you're watching with, uh, what you're having for dinner. I mean, you can do that if you're here in person as well. You can access the chat there as well. Uh, and so that would be great just to let people know uh, what you're doing as you're doing a watch party around Diamond Creek or beyond. Uh, there are links in the video description uh, if you're watching uh, online and there's some connections there with other things that are going on to do with our church. And you can always visit our website, johnsdc.org.au, to find out more about what's going on. We want to say a big thank you to Nilambic Council for their support for this event through the Festival's Grants Program. Uh, their support has, in particular, allowed us to do a really big live stream setup, uh, which has looked 
looked increasingly important during the day as the weather was just horrendous. Uh, so really big thank you to them. So, as I promised, loads and loads of Christmas carols tonight. Let's keep going. Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Let's enjoy singing. <laughs> together as we join with the angels. Take a big breath for this chorus. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Let's sing Angels We Have Heard on High.
Thank you. Thank you, band. Hey, Sue, is that Latin in Excelsis Deo? You're right. That is Latin. It means glory be to God on high. There we go. Thank you. Hey, as mentioned, I'm just going to get up a couple of times during the night, talk a little bit about what Christmas is all about. Uh, I guess for a lot of us, the experience of Christmas has a fair bit to do with the Christmas meal, you know, lunch or dinner. And there's a few stages to the Christmas meal. Starts out with the delicious stage where people have brought all the different foods and you get to taste them and that's really delicious. And then you hit the satisfied stage where you've had a really good feed and you're feeling pretty good about it, but there's still a lot of food left on the table. And you think, I can't stop now. I must keep eating. And so you push through the satisfied stage to the really full stage where your stomach is pressing on all the other internal organs inside your body. And it's telling you, you really should stop eating, but there's still more food on the table and someone's bringing out dessert. And so you press on even further until you get to that stage where you just go, oh, I've just had a gutful. I just feel awful. I don't know if I need to spend half an hour on the toilet or I just need to spew or I just need to lie on the couch and groan for the rest of the day. It's a very unpleasant feeling to have had a gutful. And so this is why we use the term, I've had a gutful, to describe other feelings that are unpleasant, like when we've had too much of other things that are annoying or just painful. So this year, you might, have said, you might say, I've had a gutful of lockdowns or masks or politicians' press conferences uh, or homeschool starting and stopping and starting again or COVID tests getting shoved up my nose or QR scanning into every shop that I have to go into. You might have had a gutful of arguing with your friends and family about all those things that I just mentioned. And this is the thing, right? We can have a gut full of things that have nothing to do with the pandemic as well. Maybe less serious things like, oh, geez, I've had a gut full of Diamond Creek internet being unstable. Again, very common experience for those of you who don't live in Diamond Creek. But also, much more serious things, like I've had a gut full of children starving in third world countries. And so this is a common experience that we have as humans. And it's not just in our time, it's been throughout human history. And if we think about the Christmas story, which was happening about 2,000 years ago, it was a common experience then too, where people in those times would have been having a gutful of some of the things that were going wrong and causing problems in their time. Some of them would be pretty similar to what we experience today. Others would have been different because their time was a bit different, their place was a bit different. But what God was doing in that particular time in history, in that particular place, Bethlehem, which is still there, if you manage to work out all the borders and stuff, you could visit it, um, was he was doing something particularly special. God's always been at work in the world, but in that particular time, he was doing something extra special. And what he was doing was going to make sure that when we look at the problems in the world and all these challenges that come our way, that we don't just have to see the only solution as lying on the couch and groaning and hoping that it'll all go away. What he was doing was making sure that we could have hope in the face of those challenges. And what he was doing was becoming a human being. He's getting born as one of us proving that he's not just some distant, uninterested, disengaged voice or ghost off in the clouds, but that he's, he's interested, he cares about us, becoming one of us. And so what it means is when we sing these songs about baby Jesus and we think about his mum being Mary, she didn't just look at a human baby, she also looked at this baby who was also amazingly, incredibly, at the same time, God. It's the incredible thing about the Christmas story. And so we're going to sing a new carol now. It's one that you may or may not have heard before. Uh, so no pressure on singing along. You're welcome just to sort of sit there and listen and take it in. But it really picks up this idea of Mary looking at her son and not just seeing the face of a human boy, but also seeing the face of God. Underneath the stars Sorry, start again <laughs> Underneath the starry sky A mother holds
holds a child tonight All is calm and all is bright She sings to him a lullaby Gloria, Gloria. I hear the angels singing some God the face some God she looks upon the great I am the gift of heaven in her hands born to save the sons of second birth Glory I hear the angels singing Glory All of the heavens ringing Glory The Savior of the world is in her arms She's staring at the face of God Staring at the face of God She's staring at the face of God Gloria I hear the angels singing God with skin on, born in Bethlehem. Please join with us as we sing together, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
The birth of this special baby is good news and brings great joy for all of us. This is Jesus Christ, the Saviour, who has been born. Jesus, the love song of God. Please sing with us, Midnight Clear, Love Song. That glorious song of old From angels bending near the earth To touch their harps of gold Peace on the earth, goodwill to men From heaven's O oh gracious King The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloud and skies they come with fierce for wings of light. And still the heavenly music flows through all the weary world. And
God so loved the world I wonder what goes on in there. Merry Christmas to you all from Fossick. Have a very safe and happy summer. Hi, Diamond Creek community. Diamond Creek Women's Football Club. I'd like to wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. We hope to see you down at the club next year. Merry Christmas! Well, here's a carol that you probably all know very well, even if you're very, very young. We're going to sing Away in a Manger. And children, you might like to pretend that you've got baby Jesus there, giving him a cuddle, a rock, as we sing. Please join with us. Flute coming up is Silent Night. Please join with us.
Well, our next carol is Noel, and I looked it up. Noel is, means Christmas carol um, from the French, but it also harks back to Latin, where it is Natalice, meaning birthday. So the first Noel was sung by angels to shepherds to tell them that Jesus had indeed been born. So let's join together and sing this Noel. One of the names that the Bible gives Jesus, apart from Jesus, uh, that he's got a few Bible nicknames, I guess, 
is Emmanuel. And the carol writers love to pick up this name because the name means God with us. And that makes sense that the Christmas carol writers would pick that up given when Jesus was born, that was literally meaning God was with us as another fellow human being. Well, what does that mean for us, like practically in our lives today? Like what, how does that change the way we live? Sometimes we can get the idea that Jesus came so that if we believe in him, if we have faith in him, that means he's going he's gonna to deal with all our problems. He's basically going to take them away. All these negative things in my life, all these challenges that I'm facing, he's basically going to clean that up for me if I put my trust in him. This is sometimes the way we can think about things. He's going to make my life easier. Uh, he's going to make my life smoother, cruisier, and he's just going to do that all for me. That's not the Christmas story. It's not the Christmas message. It's not why Jesus came. It's, he does want to help us with our lives. He does want to make our lives better, but the way he's going to do it is not by taking away all our problems just like that. In fact, if we look at Jesus' life as an example, he had a pretty challenging life. And in fact, if I had to go through a lot of the stuff that he went through, I'd be thinking, geez, I've had a gut full of this, ready to move on. But he managed to love people despite the fact that he got treated pretty poorly a lot of the time. In fact, he loved and forgave the people who organized his violent execution. So we see a different mission from Jesus when he came. It wasn't to take away all our problems and make our lives super comfortable. It was to be with us through the ups and the downs of life. And it was to, you know, and that's easy enough during the ups, isn't it? But much harder we're in those dark times, when we're in those difficult times. And we've all experienced that as a group, as a community, the last couple of years. But maybe you've experienced it particularly in your own life. Maybe the last year, the last month, the last week has been particularly difficult and challenging for you. Now, the way he's with us is in a loving, relational way. The type of love that Jesus brings is gracious love. Grace is undeserved, unearned love. Because it's easy enough to love someone when they're being awesome and when they're being amazing. That's great. But what about when we're not? And this is the great thing about the love of God that Jesus demonstrates so powerfully is that he loves us even when our negative things are going on in our life are our own fault. Maybe the problems that in our lives are due to our own stupidity or to our own bad behavior, to our own evil, to our own bad habits. Even then, we know that God is with us and showing us love because of what Jesus has done. And so that's the Christmas hope, that God is with us and showing us that gracious love all of the time, not just during the ups, but also during the downs. This next carol that we're going to sing, another newer one, uh, is called Hope Has a Name, and it picks up that Bible nickname for Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Breaking through the silence With glory in the highest the hope of all creation resting in his mother's arms a song on the horizon ringing through the heavens the long-awaited savior come to set the captives free Come to set the captives free, come set us free. Didn't see it coming 
The story of redemption was started in a manger, ended in an empty grave. All I know is hope has a name, Emmanuel, the light of the world, who broke through the darkness. All hail the King, Emmanuel, the light of the world, the glory of heaven. Come if you're broken. Come if you're searching, if you need healing, he's where you'll find it. Lay down your burdens and breathe in forgiveness. If you need freedom, yeah, he's where you'll find it. Oh, if you need freedom, yeah, he's where you'll find it. Yeah, he's where you'll find it. Hope has a name, Emmanuel, the light of the world who broke through the darkness. Kirk has said, Jesus is the hope. In the words of our next carol, a thrill of hope for a weary world that rejoices at the news of Jesus coming. So please join with us in singing, O Holy Night.
a real carol's favorite so sing it out let's lift off the roof and at home sing it as loud so that your neighbors can hear you um, please join with us in singing oh come all ye faithful
Well, uh, Jesus is not physically with us here tonight, as in we can't give him a handshake on the way out in the foyer, uh, but we do believe that he's with us today through his spirit. That was one of the great things about him being more than just human, also being God, is that he sent his spirit into the world so that each of us can have a relationship with him today, like right now. And so I just wanted to give you three things you could do to take the next step in that relationship, particularly if you're someone who... I would say, don't have a relationship with Jesus at the moment. Maybe you're even sceptical about what we've been talking about tonight. Like, yeah, this this seems a bit far-fetched. Here's three things you could do to really take the next step and just keep investigating, keep checking out Jesus. First thing you could do is to learn more about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. The easiest way to do that is to check out the four biographies of Jesus in the New Testament section of the Bible called Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, named after the authors. So we have a bunch of free copies of Mark's biography of Jesus available, uh, in, if you're watching in per- sorry, if you're here in person, they're available on a table right next to the front door on the way out. Please grab one of those uh, for free on the way out and you're welcome to take one to give to a friend as well. We also have full copies of the Bible uh, on, available there as well. If you're online, and this includes everyone, uh, we have links in our YouTube video description and on our Christmas website to free copies of the Bible, uh, a Bible app we recommend, which is also free, uh, which includes uh, Bible versions that you can read and Bible versions you can listen to, multiple different translations, multiple different languages, all available for free, where you can check out those biographies of Jesus. So do check out that and just learn more about Jesus. What a lot of people find is they have an idea of who Jesus is before they've actually read about him. And then when they actually go and read about his life and his death and resurrection, they come out with a quite different idea of who he is. Much more positive uh, and transformed in quite an exciting way. Second thing you can do is check out our online Why Jesus, uh, Why Christmas booklet. This is just a simple, easy to read summary of what Christians believe about Christmas or why we celebrate Christmas. Uh, so that's easy to access again through our YouTube description and our Christmas website. Uh, jump on there, easy to read, pretty accessible. Kids, if you read at a, a reasonable level, you should be able to read it and understand it as well. If you just like, yeah, what's the deal with Christmas? Why do Christians do this? A great little summary. And the third thing you could do is to start praying and see what happens. Prayer is conversation with God. So you could just start talking to God, telling him about what's going on in your life. You can do that out loud or in your own thoughts. He'll, he'll, he will hear you either way and just see what happens. If you've had a gut full of something, tell him about that. If you've got things going on in your life, you've got questions about who he is, start praying and just see what happens. Remember, he's with us. He loves you unconditionally and he would love to hear from you. And speaking of prayer, I thought it would be good for me to pray now for us as we head into our last bracket of songs. So let me pray for us now. Dear Jesus, we invite you to be with us through the good things this Christmas. We thank you for the holidays and that that gives us often more time to enjoy the good things in your world and to spend more time with people, the best thing that you've made. We also invite you to be with us through the tough times. And we um, especially pray for anyone here today or watching online who is experiencing a particularly dark time at the moment. I ask that you especially make your love and your presence known to them and help them as they navigate this difficult time in their life. I also want to pray for our emergency services as we head into the holidays. We thank you so much for our hospital and ambulance workers who have been working so hard during the pandemic. Uh, And now we pray for them as well as uh, our firefighters heading into the hot weather Uh, our police and our SES. Uh, We pray that you will protect them. We pray that you would help them to have each other's backs. And we thank you so much for the way they serve our community. Amen. Okay, our next song is uh, We Three Kings. Uh, uh, When people heard about the birth of Jesus, some great leaders from uh, a country a long way away, they followed a star to come and honour and worship Jesus. And so as we head into this last section of our time together, uh, we'd really like to have that attitude of honouring and worship Jesus. So let's sing We Three Kings. 
And we'd love you if you've got your mobile, fo my mobile phone with you to put your light on and to hold it up high and shine your light um, later on in this carol. Please join with us in singing We Three Kings. Thank you. Well, it's awesome to have you singing with us. We have just two songs to go, and here's another Carol's favourite, Joy to the World.
Uh, we want to say thank you again to Millenbic Council for their support of this event through the festival's grants program. Uh, we want to say a big, big thank you to all our volunteers who made this event possible. We have an incredibly dedicated band, incredibly dedicated tech team making it happen, not just in this room, but also on our live stream, uh, as well as our operations team who are helping to get the whole place set up. We give them a massive round of applause today. I want to make special mention of Sue, who's coordinated our music, uh, and Andy, who's coordinated our tech, and uh, Phil, who's coordinated our operations. They have been really fantastic in putting it all together. Hey, uh, don't forget to check out links uh, on our website, the Christmas page in particular, and of course in our YouTube video description there to find out more about what's happening in Christmas. Uh, and it's johnsdc.org.au. Uh, if you'd like to give financially to work of our church, you can just hit the give button on our the website there and you can do it digitally. If you'd like to give cash today, there's a little drop box on the wall in the foyer there. Uh, and we thank anyone for their generosity, but please don't feel obliged. It is an absolutely free event. If you'd like to join us on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, we have a number of services. There is a 5 p.m. service uh, aimed at young families, sort of primary school, kinder, preschool, that sort of thing here at 5 p.m. A more traditional uh, 11 p.m. service here, uh, heading into finishing about midnight. Uh, that's both on Christmas Eve and then on Christmas Day there's a 9 a.m. service here as well. You're most welcome to come to any of those and they are all live streamed on our YouTube channel as well. You can access them all through our website. So join us online or in person. Uh, don't forget you can take a free copy of the biography of Jesus written by Mark on your way out. I'm going to throw it back to Sue who's going to introduce to us our last Christmas carol for the night. Thank you Kirk. Well, this one, um, we'd love for you to join in with us. So we have some bells down the front here, and we'd love the children to come and grab a bell. You're going to play with us during the chorus, so you'll have to be watching and listening to know when that is. And at home, if you can grab some bells, maybe you've got some hanging on the front door or on your Christmas tree, go and get them, or some um, keys will do, some car keys. And if you don't have bells, if you have fingers, you can do the click, because this song starts with a click, and a bass line played by our amazing bass player, Damien. And he starts by playing this rhythm.
Happy Christmas, everybody. Thanks for singing along with us, and we hope to see you on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. Take care. Bye-bye.